All right, just a reminder before we get started here, uh, we're going to start with an opening statement from Coach from Delaware, as well, and we'll go into questions for the student athletes. A uh, reminder, if you'd like to ask a student athlete a question, please raise your hand. Someone will be around with a microphone. Please give your name and affiliation prior to asking your question. Uh, and with that, uh, Coach Inglesby, if you want to start with an opening statement, sure. that'd be great. Uh, sure. Um, you know, I think the finality of this always stings, but I am super, super proud of our group and how we competed. Um, we battled. Uh, we got after it. I thought we got off to a really, really good start in the first half and you know, put a little scare in them. Um, I think the end of the first half and the early part of the second half, they were able to really extend that lead, and we were battling uphill from there. So um, they're a really talented basketball team who I think played really well. They shot the ball well, and um, they made 13 threes. I think that was the difference in the game. Questions for the student athletes? We got one right here. Hey, uh, Kevin. Uh, Andy Walter from the Delaware State News. Um, you know, you had a seven-point lead. Things were going pretty well. You know, obviously it's very early, but could you appreciate that moment at all? Could you kind of feel that, you know, that excitement of getting off to a good start on a big stage like that? I mean, I'm pretty sure we appreciated it, but as soon as we started appreciating it, they started hitting threes. So <laughs> we couldn't appreciate it for too long. Kevin, Kevin, just to kind of follow up what Andy asked you, I mean, what makes those guys so difficult to defend? I mean, you guys did a really good job at the mm -hmm. get-go, you know, really kind of making it, you know, making them work for three-point shots. But, you know, once they kind of found their groove, it was really hard to stop them. What makes it so tough? Uh, I mean, that's a really good team. Like, whenever you make a mistake, they capitalize on it. And that's like, we kept saying that, like, playing against them, like, you got to be, like, close to perfect on defense because as soon as you make a mistake, they're going to see it and they're going like, <laughs> to take advantage of it. And that's what they were doing. Nick Lawrence, I'm a major manager. Jair, I mean, this past month and a half, two months, you've just been playing outstanding basketball. You won most outstanding player in the tournament and rookie of the year, and now you led the way with scoring today. Uh, what have you learned this year, especially these last two months since transferring over from Providence and having such a great role on this team? Um, I think I learned a lot. I think I definitely uh, know how I'm being used my t by my team, by my coaches. Um, it's really just an honor to be able to be out there with those guys every day. And it's really an honor that my coaches and my teammates believe in me to go out there and perform for them. I forgot to say this the first time. Kevin Treslini, News Journal, DelawareOnline.com. Uh, Jair, uh, early in the game, um, you know, did you guys have visions of, wow, wow, we can do this dancing in your head? I mean, is, is that kind of going on early in a game like that when, you know, when you have a lead, uh, when you have a lead and you have a, a, a team like that on the ropes a little bit, as, as early as it is? Uh, absolutely. You know, it was definitely, we have a competitive group of guys. And, I mean, we were playing the Golden State Warriors. I think everybody would believe in ourselves and believe in us winning. So, uh, you know, definitely going into the game, we expected to win. Um, and throughout the whole game, we still expected to win, but we came up short. Connor Mance, the review. Uh, Kev, can you just talk some about what the defense of Villanova did in that first half to slow you guys down? I think you guys got to, off to the hot star, especially their perimeter defense. Uh, I would say their switching kind of got us a little stagnant offensively. But I also think it was just on us, really. Like, we were missing a lot of, like, open shots and a lot of shots we usually make. All right, we've got a Zoom question here. Uh, Christopher Heidel from Herb FM. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Hermiton Radio in Baltimore. What did you guys uh, What did you guys take from this game for next year to uh, to to learn from playing in this this game today? Kevin, you want to start on that? Me? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I won't be here next year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my <laughs> fault. You can take it, Jack. Um, I'll say, you know, um, I think we all saw the level of intensity uh, that we had these last weeks of practice as we went on our run, you know, winning games and. Um, I think that next season we'll have that same sense of urgency throughout the whole year since we know what it's like to get here. And uh, we'll have a group of guys who are hungry to get back here and uh, win some games here. Mike Sealski from the Philadelphia Inquirer for Jair. Um, what sets Villanova apart? What makes them different from other teams that you've encountered you know, in your career? Um, you know, they play really hard. They're very disciplined. They're a very connected group. Um, like Kevin said, if you make mistakes, they definitely capitalize. And uh, some of our mistakes, they capitalized on and it ended up biting us in the end. Matthew Ryan with City Basketball Love. Kevin, 
when you checked out of the game for the final time, you kind of took a while going down the line, you know, hugging people. What were the emotions going on in that moment? And is there anything in particular you're going to remember about your time at Delaware? Uh, I mean, after the game, like, just hugging everybody, it was just hitting me like, wow, like, it's really over. Like, I feel like my past five years here, like, I really matured, especially with the coaching staff. Like, I matured as a man, and they helped me. And I appreciate them so much for that. And then, like, with the guys this year, like, I was telling them on the bench, like, this is, like, the first time in a long time where, like, I felt like the team was, like, a real actual family. And, like, we stuck together no matter what, like, ups and downs throughout the year. And I would say, like, one thing I will miss about being at Delaware, uh, I mean, just being with the team and just having, like, the support that we have. Question. This is, o- this is Okan kind of with Sport Help Media. So a lot of people always overlook um, different conferences, obviously uh, power, powerhouse conference. How does playing in your conference uh, help you prepare to play anybody? It doesn't matter what uh, region they are in. Jair, you want to take that? Yeah, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be five players on the court. You know, they uh, I mean, yeah, I, I really do hope they stay together because – I mean, even though we're losing five guys, like, we still have a bunch of key guys that really didn't get to play this year and that are really, really good. So I feel like if, we, if they stay together, they can make an even deeper run than we did this year. Last question for the student athletes. Kevin Trestolini, DelawareOnline.com. Jair, uh, kind of, again, along those same lines, I mean, you've got, you've got three years left. Andrew's got three years left. Jameer's got a couple years left. I mean, I know it's way too early to be thinking about next year, but, you know, just kind of how excited are you for the potential you guys have to build off what you've done uh, the last couple of weeks? Um, I'm extremely excited, you know. Uh, when I came back here to Delaware, I said I wanted to help do something special for the state of Delaware, for University of Delaware. Um, and I think we're really just getting started here. Um, I hope I can do more to help the University of Delaware put, put us all on the map and uh, come back here next year and win some games. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, please raise your hands for questions for Coach Inglesby, please. Mike Sealski from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, Martin, you're obviously really familiar with the history of basketball in Philadelphia. Can you kind of put into context for everybody what Jay has done with that program and kind of where they're at? I get the sense from listening to you, you didn't think your team played badly at all, and it's still you know, a fairly sizable margin. Yeah, I mean, they're really, really good. Um, I think I told somebody the other day when I got the job at the University of Delaware, um, Villanova has been the best basketball program in college basketball. Um, They won it in, I think, 15, 16. They won it again two years later. Um, They've been the model program. It hasn't been Duke. It hasn't been Kentucky. It hasn't been North Carolina. It hasn't been Kansas. It's It's been Villanova. Um, and as I've built my program, I've tried to model how we do things very similar to how Jay's run his program. Um, and again, they're really, really good. They put so much pressure on you on the offensive end with their ability to shoot the basketball. I mean, they made 13 threes, but they had four guys that made two or more. And then they're so connected defensively. They're tough. They're physical. Um, they know who they are. They're selfless. Um, you know, I could go on and on about how they play and how they do things. And I think they're, you know, one of the three to five best teams in college basketball. So, um, you know, Jay has built an elite, elite basketball program. And I think they're at the, you know, they're at the pedestal. Like, it's them that you aspire. There's a lot of teams in the country that want to be like Villanova basketball. And he has built that with a lot of hard work, some really, really good players. And they got up to a point now, it's just, it's kind of a machine. Hey, Martin, Andy Walter, State News. Um, you know, a lot of teams, not a lot, but, you know, a good number of teams in this situation come out and, you know, the bright lights, big stage, you know, that first 10 minutes can be tough. Mm -hmm. You know, your guys look pretty comfortable out there. Um, What does it say about this group? Yeah, I mean, uh, they were ready to compete. Um, This group came, (laughs) became very confident um, coming off what we did in D.C. And uh, they really believed that they could compete on a big stage against Villanova. 
and we got off to a good start. I thought we executed our game plan. Um, our preparation was fabulous, and you know, we didn't shoot the ball well from the three-point line. I think that was an area against a team like that. You're going to have to be able to make a couple threes. I thought we had some good looks. Uh, we took some quick ones, but we were battling on the defensive end and limiting them to one shot. And then that last two or three minutes of the first half into the start of second half, they were able to get separation. And then they can swallow you up on the defensive end with their size and positional size and physicality. Um, but again, you know, the finality of this is really hard, but couldn't be more proud of our group for how they competed, how they dug in, and they never gave up for 40 minutes. You know, they left it all out there, and it wasn't an easy second half for us, but uh, could have got away from us in a hurry. But they kept fighting and kept battling and kept believing in each other. Uh, Kevin Trestlini, News Journal, Delaware Uh Martin, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bouncing off Andy's question a little bit, and you did answer it partially. But, I mean, coming into the game in your preparation, did you guys look at the three-point line as, you know, that could be the do-or-die spot? I mean, they could really, really get us from there if you guys don't have a good day yourselves from there, and it, it, it kind of turned out that way. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, easier said than done to take away the three-point line against them. This is a team that took 53s in a college basketball game this year against Syracuse. That was one of the keys for us, but, you know, they. I thought we did a really good job guarding for 25 seconds, and then they made some very timely threes. Gillespie makes a step back one. Daniels had a one that bounced in, hit the front of the rim. It bounced in at the end of the first half. Um, and then we had a couple breakdowns, and they make you pay. And you know you want to do a really good job guarding the line and trying to take it away. Again, it's, it's a lot easier said than done. And, and that was a big emphasis of ours. We obviously didn't do a good enough job to kind of keep us in the game. Connor Mance with the review, uh, Coach, can you just talk some about what it meant to get Dylan, Kev, Ryan, all the seniors here to this stage, uh, to get the championship last week, but to this stage at the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, that's why they came back. I mean, it, all credit to them. They worked so hard. It took us on an unbelievable journey throughout this season. I told them after the game, they're all going to graduate from here as champions, and they can never take that away from us. Um, and they're going to be able to hang a banner. They're going to have a ring. Um, they moved our program forward. I think they raised the bar. Um, for Delaware basketball on a big stage. And, you know, we're disappointed we didn't get this, but I think there's so much that we can take away from this experience uh, for our team, for those guys, for Delaware basketball moving forward. And I can't thank them enough uh, for everything they've done to our program. It was an honor to coach those guys. Every day they came ready to compete. They were proud to represent the University of Delaware in everything that they did. And you know, we'll have some time to reflect on this, and hopefully I can go out and buy him a beer sometime soon and, and enjoy that moment with them. Last question for Coach right down here. Hey, Matthew Ryan with City of Basketball Love. Obviously, those three guys, you just touched on this a little bit, but they decided to come back, and, you know, want, you guys won the CAA. What were the emotions like when you took them out of the game for the final time and you talked to them in the locker room? Yeah, I mean, I just thanked them. I told them I love them, um, you know, Kevin and Ryan have been with me since day one. You know, they've helped build this program to what it is now. And um, I'll never forget that. And again, our coaching staff, the investment that we made in them as student athletes, you know, they've paid it back to us. And, and they've been fabulous representatives of this university. Um, and uh, it's going to be hard looking down that practice or skill work in the spring and not seeing Kevin and Ryan there because they've been such a big part of what we've been able to build. And then Dylan came halfway through it. And, you know, there's no better teammate. There's no better worker, no better representative of our university than Dylan Painter. And um, I'm excited to see what the future holds for all three of those guys. I think basketball is in the future. But at the end of the day, they're going to graduate from Delaware and they're going to be champions. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thanks, guys.